Hello again guys, so today we're going to be making a little text printer which will print some text on the screen. We're also going to have a similar scenario to the screen fader where we'll be able to do something after the text is finished printing so we can kind of chain these actions together. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing we want to do is go to our canvas here and add a UI panel. Okay. Let's just drag it to a general area that the text uh, message could appear. So let's just make it like maybe this big. And I'm going to make sure that it's exactly in the center as it is now. And then we're going to add a text mesh pro to that. And we'll just say this is where the text is going to print in brackets uh, exciting and make the font just a touch smaller actually it's probably big enough I just need to widen it out okay this can be multi-line if you so want it to be now right now we're going to have it print from the middle of the screen but we can change that later, but it will get a little bit complicated to do that. So we're not going to do it straight away. I'm going to start basic and have it just kind of print from the middle. Okay. Now that that's done, we can kind of just delete that. And I'm just going to center this a bit better. Uh, and next we're going to go to our controllers and add a a new component, we're going to call this dialog printer. Um, so this is kind of set for a specific purpose right now of printing dialog to the screen. Uh, later on, we won't want to print things that aren't related to dialog somewhere else in a similar fashion. And at that point, we might kind of abstract away from this and make it a bit more generic, but there's no point in doing it now because we might never need it. So let's open our dialog printer. Now we're going to need a reference to that text mesh pro we've just set up. So we'll have a serialized field, private text mesh. Uh, I think it's called TMP text. And we'll just have to make sure we're including the, hang on, using TM pro. And I'll call it dialogue text mesh <laughs> die or die die ah log yeah that's it okay so we're gonna have two methods on here for a start so public void print text or let's just say print dialog line so a single line for now we can have support for multiple lines later on and right now we're just going to take in a string and that's going to be called line to print. All right. Now in C sharp and many other programming languages, we can consider a string as an array of characters. Um, so you can actually iterate over each letter in the entire sentence and just print one out one at a time. So let's do that. Let's do a, for loop and we'll just say when i is less than lines line to print dot length okay i plus plus and then here we're just gonna say uh, uh line to print i so the index we're currently at uh, and let's store this in a variable so just for better readability. So var character equals line to print i. Perfect. Okay, now how do we actually put it onto the text? Well, we just have to say dialog text mesh plus, uh, sorry, dot text plus equals character. Now, the problem with this will be that if we print a new line, it will just keep printing over what's already there and we'll just end up with a very long string. 
So let's make sure to clear things off at the start. So we'll just say dialog text mesh dot text or set text. I should be using that to be fair. So we'll set it to string dot empty. So it will just be blank. Uh, the reason to use the method here instead of setting the property or field directly is that uh, setting the setting something through the method like this will generate less garbage. At least that's what a lot of documentation about similar scenarios in Unity says. So that's the way we're going to do it. So set text. And instead of setting it to that, we'll set it to dialogu text mesh dot text plus character. Okay. So we're going to need to plug this in. And then if we want to test this out, let's just do in awake. We'll say print dialogu line. And the line to print will be hello. This is a line printed by the dialogu printer. Whoa. Full stop. Grammar is important. It's not. It really isn't. Um, so let's see if this all works. We just need to hook up the reference to the text mesh. Do, do, do. Ah. And it's right now it's just TMP text. And this is why I like to name things better. You can always just drag it in there and I probably will end up doing that a lot, but it's nice to name things properly. So we'll just call this dialogu texturu. Okay. So let's go back to the controller. There we go, dialog text. So let's start the game. So you didn't really see it happen because it was too fast, right? <laughs> but it's done this all and it's waited until the entire thing's there until the next frame will be processed. So it happens basically instantly. So we're going to have to use a coroutine again, similar to how we did with the screen fader. And the reason I'm reiterating this is so that you can kind of see, oh yeah, that makes sense. Like this is where we should use coat routines. It's not just for fading the screen. It can also be used for this. Anything that uses a for loop or any kind of loop can be quite handy. If you want to do something slowly over time, do it in a loop like that. So let's, let's, generate a new method out of this. So extract method. And this is going to be called CO print dialogue line. That's okay. If you don't like the underscore here, that's fine. You can name it something else. I personally don't care. <laughs> so we call this private I enumerator because as we learn, we have to use this. Well, it's one of the things we can use for coroutines. At the end, I'm just going to say yield return null just to stop that error. And then we have to call it from here saying start coroutine. And then we call it regularly like that. Okay. So now we just have to make sure that after the first character is printed or after every iteration of a character being printed, then we're going to do yield return null or we might want to pass in a delay for each character. So maybe we can have a float um, char, char speed, something like that. That sounds like an awful name, but that's good because awful name is good. And let's just plug it in here and here. Uh, float char speed. And now, obviously, we need to actually give it a speed. I'm going to say 0.0. .0 seven, six, no, six. Let's see how that goes. Um, you could have this hard coded. You could not even pass it in. You could just say it like here, you know, wait for 0 .0 six. But if you wanna have your text printed differently, depending on what's happened, like maybe a character speaking in an angry way, so it goes like really fast or something, or, you know, I'm thinking of Undertale, like when it prints really slow to really add emphasis to something spooky or whatever. 
So anyway, enough waffling. Now we'll do yield return new wait for seconds real time real time to make sure that we're um, it's going to be the same regardless of frame rate i'm not sure if wait for seconds uh, is much different um but it's oh it uses scaled time we can use this as well i learned something new so the scaled time is like the time that you can change your, the whole speed of your game in the project settings you can turn it up and down and this works with that but it, I think this should work with that. Anyway, enough waffling. Let's try it out. Doopy doopy doo. So as you can see, it's printing. Yeah. So this is one way of printing dialogue. Another way, which many, many, many games use, I would say it's more common to use it than this character by character way is that you'll actually have like a mask and it will be like a rectangle that will kind of move across the screen and everything behind the mask is uh, hid is hidden so it starts here and then it moves across and then you get a more of a smooth kind of effect of printing so leave a comment down below if you would like to see me cover that cover that method um, if I don't hear anything I'll just stick with this because it's easy <laughs> and I don't want to waste too much time. So the next thing to do is we're going to add a callback so that we can do something once we've finished printing the dialogue. So what we'll do here is we'll say action uh, and make sure we're using system so that we get that uh, class and say action finished callback. And yeah, you're right. It is really, really similar to what we were doing with the screen fader. That's a very good observation of you. So let's just plug it in here and here. What the fuck happened? His head fell off. Wait, what? Um, let me just plug that in there and there. Okay, so now we just do it. That's right. At the bottom here, we just say finish callback question mark. We just say is this null dot invoke uh, the question mark will just say if it's if it's null just just forget about it okay so that's what that operator does here uh, I'm just gonna move this around a bit till my ADHD lets me continue and I just need to add this in here right now we'll just add null and in fact why don't we just get rid of this thing now because this was just for testing so we're gonna go ahead and go to our box interaction now okay now on the item used what would what I'd like to do is print this text and then change the color to red so we're gonna need a reference to the dialogue printer and this is another situation where I think it kind of makes sense to have it as a singleton because we only ever want one instance of this. And if you remember from before, the way we define a singleton or the very basic way of defining this anti-pattern is we'll say public dialogue printer instance. You can call it any anything you want. You can call it Bob Marley's toe was hurt if you want, but that would be a bit... Why would you do that? Uh, so get private set and then we'll go to our, well, we add a new private method at the bottom for awake and we'll just say dialogue, sorry, instance equals this. Okay, so now we've got our instance of it set up so we can reference it from anywhere globally. <laughs> I am the global man. Sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of fuss about using kind of global variables and for good reason, you should try and limit them as much as possible because if it's something that is being changed from all different places, it gets kind of messy to track. Um, but I think if your thing that you're kind of fiddling with is something that really should only have 
one instance of, then it makes sense to have it as a global static uh, singleton words. Okay, so on item use, we're going to say dialog printer dot instance. No, that's not what I said, is it? Hang on, did I save that? Public, oh, public static, sorry. I cannot forget the word static. Static just means that we'll be able to reference this outside of the um, an instance of the class. So this variable technically contain is contained in the actual class and not an instance of the class. So that's why we can see it. So dialog printer dot instance dot print dialog line. You used the I don't even know what it is key for some reason you use the key on this cube for some reason how about that you like that and we've got char speed 0.06f and on finish callback we're going to just do uh, something basic for now um, we're just going to do open bracket close parentheses I mean a little pointy arrow and then just put this in here and that will kind of this wraps it as like an anonymous method which means I don't have to write out a whole method name for it I just say okay let, have this like fake method and pass that in okay so let us give that a whirl So let's go ahead and use our thingy, rusty key, use. You used the key on this cube for some reason. <laughs> as you can see, as soon as it finished printing, the thing happened. But maybe we want to wait for the player input before we carry on from here. So what we can do for that is something kind of cheesy, but I kind of like the simplicity of it at the same time. What am I doing? So we'll just say at the end here, we'll say yield return new wait until, and then one of these open close parentheses, little arrow, and we'll say input dot get key down key code dot space for now. Very cheesy, but it's kind of nice so it will kind of the program will lock up here on the thread that this is running and wait for us to press space so let's try that again okay so let's do it so rusty key use Okay, you use the key on this cube for some reason, then press space, and there we go. Now, right now, we don't have the player control back after that, so let's give the player control back, and let's also stop. Let's get rid of what we've got printed there. Dot set text, so we'll just set the text to string dot empty again. Uh, this is more of a just to be sure at the start. So that will get rid of it. And we want to do that after we press space as well, not before. And then we'll say, let's have a look at the event bus for a second to try and remember what we've got here. So we've got resume gameplay. So we'll say that dot invoke, and then we'll just say event bus dot uh, instance dot send message. No, not send a message. What am I doing? What's it called? Resume gameplay. So let's see if that will work. We could have also done that um, in the callback that we used earlier, but we'll do it like this for now. So 
we'll say use that. So right now I can't move. You use the key on this cube for some reason, and now I can move. So there you have it. I hope that gives you a little bit more to play with until next time. And I am going to try my hardest to get another video out this weekend. I'm really sorry for the delay. Uh, life gets in the way sometimes. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoy the content and stay with me. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye-bye.